Hi, I'm Mike Morales, and I am, uh, well, you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff here, uh, part of TequilaAficionado.com and Tequila Aficionado Media. I'm here in San Antonio, and my cohort over there. Rick Levy, San Diego. We are here tonight, Rick, and I'm really excited because tonight we have a brand new tequila, fresh on the market. Look at this baby. Yeah. Tres nice Ochos. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Now, I don't I know about really, you. I really like the embossed medallions. Yeah, on. isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. Look, at, look at the, you know, touch. check this out. Okay, so we're going to open, I'm going to open mine on camera. So here we go. Yeah. The reason we're, we're excited about this tequila is because it is, it, it has been making a big splash on, um, on social media. Look at this. Wrapped in tissue. I love it. It's different wrapped. color, different color for each. Yes, this is, we're doing a Blanco tonight. Um, so we'll be, check out this bottle now. Mine's a, a little bit empty, not a whole lot, but look <laughs> at this. Look at that. That is yeah. one gorgeous bottle. And again, the, the cork is also uh, embossed. Yeah. Um, it presents really well. Like uh, you know, if you were going to a house party and bringing a house, uh, bringing a host gift, you know, there there are very few impressed. tequilas that are wrapped in tissue. I can name them on you know on on one hand. One of them, of course, very very popular that started this whole trend years and years and years ago. Um, but it's but you don't see it very often because you know all this packaging costs a lot of money, dude. I mean, you know, these come in their own cylinders. Um, you know, the the there has been no expense spared with with this stuff. Um, and the interesting thing is, what distillery does it come from? <laughs> uh, Fabrica Tequila Finos. Yep. And what was it that they that they used to make, or they still make, or still on the shelves? Show show them the the other oh. tequilas that come out of there. <laughs> yeah, remember uh, Ka? Uh, long, long may it live, yeah. somewhere on the shelf. The, uh, it, these bottles are collectors' items. <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, this is uh, just to just to let you all know. This is a, number one. It's a kosher tequila as well. Um, Nome 1472. It is Fabrica de Tequilas Finos, very famous distillery. We yeah. have uh, several distill uh, several lowlands. Right in tequila, right on the edge of tequila. Yes, it's on the outskirts. Right behind it are, are actually railroad tracks. Yeah, I have pictures. And agave of... fields, right? <laughs> well, you know, I honestly is, uh, is Cuervo right across from them. It they're they're catty corner and down the street. Oh, actually, okay. I think it's like down the street and around the corner because you have to walk a certain length to get there. It's a very large facility. Mm -hmm. I have pictures that I um, from my first trip there that I have been looking through and I and I'll eventually put those together in a in a in an article for for tequila aficionado some of the other tequilas that come out of there are Mexican moonshine yep there you go uh, that's that's the face of it right there and there are railroad tracks right in front the uh, the the train yeah. the the tequila train and and not necessarily the uh, the tourist train but the actual train train <laughs> is right out front <laughs> so, um, and I'm not, exa I'm not even exactly sure where it travels to and from, but it, it, it does go right in front of the distillery. One of the other famous tequilas that come out of there, look at this, Rick, Tonala. That was one of their first. Yes. Um, they're really famous for their bottles, uh, you know, because the, the ceramic ones do, are coming out of Mexico. The, the more, um, depending on the who owns the brands because it's one of the larger maquiladoras in, in, yeah, they, in the city a lot of brands coming out like 20 yeah. brands they're making some of the bottles uh, i remember getting lost in their warehouse and i remember seeing one of their bottles uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, crates or or pallets of bottles coming from china hmm. which which really upset me because i thought <laughs> everything came out of mexico right but anyway we're going to try the Blanco tonight, uh, and, and we want to thank Tres Ochos because, number one, they, they hand-delivered these bottles to you, right? Yes. Um, 
And I think they didn't they leave you with some a banner or something like that. These guys. Yeah, yeah, they did. It was uh, it was you know not not like a, a wall whole wall banner, but uh... hey, nothing wrong with that. This is at a at a um, just to just to be sure. This is at a, at a normal ABV. It's eighty proof, I believe. And yeah, yeah. Now. If you follow them, you, you can follow them on, on uh, Instagram. You can follow them on Facebook. I, I'm not sure if they have a Twitter account, but they are listed under Triple H Spirits, 888 Spirits. And they've been doing a lot of stuff in, in Asia, right? You, you, you do a little due diligence on those guys. Yeah, well, I, you know, I read some of the material they had on their website, and uh, they're sort of, you know, doing this meld of, you know, like this Asian philosophy with Mexican spirits and, uh, and, uh, aren't they out of Singapore? Don't, aren't they doing some, some heavy work in Singapore and probably Macau for that matter? I, I think part of their operation is run out of, they said something on their website about, um, about, you know, some logistics happening out of Singapore, I think. Wow. So this is a, this is a brand, um, that, that, there's a big splash, and I'm going to go out on a limb, Rick. I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to think about this tequila because we are sipping this off the cuff. But right now, I just want to go on record and say that I want to nominate these guys for packaging. Yeah. Brand of promise for packaging. Look, yeah, look packaging at this, presentation. Look at yeah. the – and it's and it's very uh, bartender-friendly. You know, you you most of these bottles don't – you look at them on the shelf sure. and you, you think – you know, it might be difficult to pour from, but they're really not. It really has a good hand feel. You know, yeah. your whole hand fits fits around it, so you can you can make it look elegant without without being you know bartender unfriendly. So, what are your thoughts on the synthetic corks? I think I've decided that I prefer synthetic corks. You know, when when is that blasphemy? No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> first of all, real cork is expensive. You know, it is a renewable item. But, um, you know, depending on how old your, your bottle of tequila is, I mean, a lot of us have, have had, you know, uh, bottles of, of uh, tequila, you know, Don Fe, El Tesoro Don Felipe with, with, the, um, with the cork falling apart, you know, after so many years. Yeah. Um, I think well, Tesoro has gone to synthetic now. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple, and, I have a couple of bottles with the uh, natural cork. But you know you have to keep you have to wet them. You you know even when you open them you have to tip it over and wet it. On occasion, I've got some some collector's bottles that that I every once in a blue moon I'll I'll go in there and look at those legs. legs. You got bubbles, man, and legs. And legs. Now you're using a Riedel. I'm using a, a Glencairn. Uh, and this is the Copita Glencairn it's glass. It's really coating the glass. Yeah, it's it's thick. Um, the legs are thick. I'm, I'm again not sure what that means, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's something I noticed. You know, going back to the bottle um, and just the uh, the opening of the bottle mm -hmm. rather than the physical bottle itself. Something I noticed. I opened uh, when the bottles came in. I cracked the seals and opened them in case, um, in you know, to sort of let them oxidize a little if they right. needed to. And uh, what I noticed is when I cracked the, the seals and opened them up, I wasn't getting really any methanols at all off the top of the bottle, mm -hmm. which had me thinking that, you know, it's like, oh, well, are they aerating before bottling or are they letting it sit in stainless for a couple of days before they bottle it? But so uh, you get right now, since we don't have. You know, like we, like we were saying, if you're getting this for a host that you're bringing to a house party, they'll be able to open it right away and uh, they won't be put off by any of those uh, fumes you can sometimes get off a new bottle. Well, it's like anything else, though. You don't want to keep it in a hot car. You don't want to, you know, leave it in your trunk. Uh, we've the, the whole country has been baking lately in, in this heat yeah. wave. So you want to be careful when you, you know, when, when you deliver this that, that it's not too hot. Because, you know, even when we get stuff delivered, I just got another delivery of tequila yesterday and, you know, the bottle's warm and, and you can't, you just let them cool off at room temp and then hope for the best when you open them, you know? Yeah. Right now, what are you getting on the top? I'm getting, 
I, I want to say I'm getting some like raw agave is what I'm getting. Is what yeah. I'm getting. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. It's, you know, it's very green and, you know, vegetal. Yeah. And, yeah. And now, I'm think, not sure. I'm not sure uh, a whole lot about where they get their agave, whether they buy them, you know, if they have uh, uh, their own farms or if they buy from growers, which could be the case and where they're buying from. Uh, but, but if I, I had to guess, I would probably say they're using Lowlands agave. Yeah, you know, they are right in tequila. That would be more readily available. Yeah, but you you can get them trucked in from anywhere. So yeah. you know, it could be a combination of of the two. I, I'm not sure how. Again, we're limited in our information as to where they're getting their agave. Um, you know, whether whether they're aerating it or not. Um, that kind of thing. Are you getting any of the uh, the fruitiness off of it that you might get? A little from bit. A little, not, you know, it's not a, it doesn't smell to me like a Highlands that I'm familiar with. Yeah. I, but I do get a lot of green agave, so. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I, for me, I think it falls more in like the, uh, the herbal and citrus range, which would, again, be more of a Lowlands thing, right? Could be. Could be. I, I'm even. I mean, I, I could even venture to say I'm getting even a little bit of the wet cement, just just ever so slightly. I'm not even tasting it yet. So. Yeah. And where does what what creates the wet cement aroma? Minerals. Um, it depends on the process. Uh, you know, who's processing it, how they're processing it. If they're using a taona, that would that would really. Yeah. You know. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they're using roller shredders. Yeah, and I and if and, I'm not uh, mistaken, I, if I'm not mistaken, they have um, they have autoclaves also. Yeah, yeah. So I think that explains why we're not getting baked agave; we're getting green agave. So exactly. Hmm. Mm. Oh wow! Wow. This is um, it's it's a nice smooth entry, but the agave is definitely present. Yeah, and it's not like something uh, that has been overly filtered or something in order to make it smooth. Yeah, it's a double distilled for sure, and and um, the the I noticed it in the middle of my palate is where I got the explosion of pepper. I got I got some white pepper on there. Um, the finish is kind of medium to short, though. Yeah, it's a and, it's uh, a medium to short finish. I would agree. Wow. And it's really, you know, it all seems very focused on the agave notes. Mm -hmm. And I think what that what they might be doing is they might be making some, you know, fairly sizable cuts on the heads and tails which would really just, you know, focus on the heart of the distillation. And, uh, you know, I, I, what I'm probably saying here is that, uh, you know, like with other tequilas we've looked at recently, especially, you know, ones done by Felipe Camarena or um, uh, he does, you know, he's more willing to go into the heads and tails to, yeah. you know, to really try different things. And uh, of course, you know he's the mad scientist. So he's he's just—he's just, he's but, just uh, nuts. And I think um, actually Jake Lustig had sent us an email afterwards, explaining that that the roller, the the Frankenstein uh, Taona, does does help in 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 giving it a different flavor profile. So it does impart something just like a regular Taona would. Hmm. Uh, like I say, I, I don't know. About Tres Ochos, you know, we're not, the, the, we just have the little cocktail things, you know, that you, the, you yeah. see in the menus, you know, and it's beautiful photography, I can tell you for sure. Um, it you, kind of feels like the, uh, the, the tequila for Carnival from the, uh, yeah, right. from the materials we have. Well, you know, the, the, obviously it's got this exotic look to it, and if yeah. you follow them on Instagram or if you've seen some of our pictures, 
it photographs beautifully. Uh, it, Rick just took a picture of, of them that I haven't even had a chance to put up on yeah. our Instagram yet. In the background of that photo is the banner that they draw. Oh, on. yeah, yeah. Um, In fact, it, it had a really nice classic look. The other banner they wanted to give me uh, had, you know, more of this kind of photography. Right, right. Um, but, you know, I've got no place to put banners in my house. So, <laughs> they, Well, you know, we have plenty of wall space. Um, <laughs> you guys are doing the road show soon. Yeah, too, so. yeah. So, you know, they're, they're coming along on the road show. I, I say brand of promise, Rick. I think, I think it's got a, a very, uh, very worthy flavor profile. It is not like some of the other uh, tequilas, other Blancos I've had from that distillery. I've had Cielo, for instance. I've had, uh, well, Mexican Moonshine is much softer than this one. So, you know, even though they do make several brands for several different, you know, brand owners out of that distillery, it's one of the more well-known maquiladoras. This is not anything that I, that I can say that it, it tastes similar to. Uh, that's not to say that it isn't, but... For, for me right now, I, I'm really, I'm digging this green agave. Now, are they using the Noms Master Distiller, or do they have their own uh, I, I, again, Maestro that they're bringing in? They're a mystery. I don't know. I, I know that, that uh, the owner, um, the gentleman that was, uh, that, that had dropped, that, that we had spoken to on the phone, uh, Jordan, Jody? his name is, uh, everybody calls him Jordy, I think, but it's a... Uh, uh, Jordan is is his first name, in fact. Jordan Vic Gerber. Yeah. And that's all we know. I mean, the guy's a nice guy. Very cool well, guy to on talk their to. Website, on their website, they said their master distiller was Arturo Fuentes. And so I'm not sure if he's with the NOM or if he's someone that they bring in. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. If any of our, of our viewers can tell us on YouTube, if they, you know, the name sounds very familiar. But, and I'm sure if I do some digging, I can find out if he, if he actually works with, uh, uh, with uh, Tequilas Finos. I, I believe he does, but I can't be sure. Mm. Um, you know, if you can tell us, sign up down below. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking brand of promise for this Blanco. It's bright. Yeah, you it's know, beautiful. this is this is really very pleasant. It's you know the agave is definitely present. It's you know got a smooth entry. Um, explodes not, explodes on impact in the middle yeah. of your palate. It really does. Yeah. But you know, not in any kind of offensive way. Mm, Just no. you know, it's enjoyable. It's something you could sip you know all night long if you wanted to. Yeah, because the finish is short to nothing. You know, you think you're going to get a much lo longer, warm, fuzzy, but you, yeah. you're not getting that. Which in their uh, in their materials, they have a couple of drinks that they're uh, recommending. Oh, see, I didn't get the those. The, uh, I know that they've the, taken the pictures Rosa, of Mokila. The Pink Lady, and uh, that is the silver uh, mixed uh, three to one with Chambord. Uh, wow. And then pink lemonade garnished with raspberries and fine sugar. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that would be delicious for people who, are, who enjoy pink drinks. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then there's the mochila. The mochila. The uh, Mexican mojito. So that's, uh, you know, muddled mint with the silver. And Ooh, I can see. Fresh I, lime juice club soda. I can see where the mint would go really, really well with this. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when this, like when it hits the nose, too, you know, it has that, uh, you know, that agave aroma that, you know, the, goes the green, up. The green, the, the raw agave is what, it's, and, what I smell. You know, hits the senses kind of the way, like, um, like a, a mint or clove or something like that, the way it gets up in your nose. Um, you know, it doesn't smell like mint or clove to me. You know, I just, I get agave. But, uh, you, you know, it has even, that. You might even be able to get just a, just a hair, a little bit of, of some cinnamon, but more like a hot cinnamon. Um, I know that Charbet, for instance, when I first had it, um, uh, and they, of course, distill uh, at Carlos Camarena's distillery. Um, I, I, I was getting cinnamon, and I, I wasn't sure where that was coming from, but I got it from the Blanco. So, um, you know, it's way, way in the back, but it's very pleasant nose. Obviously, you know, very cocktail forward. I say brand of promise. Yeah. 
nominee for the Blanco. Um, that's our take on Tres Ochos Tequila. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. And Rick Levy in San Diego. And you've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff here on TequilaAficionado.com, Tequila Aficionado Media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like pressing red buttons, press that red button. <laughs> and uh, as we like to say, tomar sabiamente. <laughs>